Agentic AI can accelerate productivity and change the way we work. But what are some security considerations that are top of mind for CISOs who want to take advantage of this brand new technology? Hi, my name is Meena Ganesh. I'm here with our CTO of Box, Ben Kuss, And today, we're diving into the world of agentic security. So be sure to like and subscribe to this and many more videos that are coming once every week. So Ben, let's dive into it. What is agentic security and why does it matter? Yeah, the more that you have your AI agents do for you, um, the more you need to be concerned about the security of AI agents. And so we talk a lot on this series and in general with inter uh, about enterprises and how they're adopting more AI, um, adopting more AI agents, looking to have them do more complex tasks, giving them access to more data, giving them more things like tools to do more and more kind of capabilities. And in many cases, this is uh, to serve this, this um, transformational period we're in where AI can do more for an organization. But with that comes these kind of concerns, um, both from the perspective of AI agents that can potentially do something you didn't expect, um, in addition to them, their, uh, well, sometimes do, can be manipulated in ways that an attacker could use to then potentially cause you uh, serious problems. Dive into that a little bit more for me. You said there, there are some concerns. So are there, you know, just some set of things that enterprises should just make sure that they take care of? Like, what are some kinds of concerns that yeah. they should have in mind? Yeah. As we always like to talk about the idea of um, thinking of agents first as like as people, an organization to kind of get a sense of what they could do. Imagine if you brought in a whole bunch of people to your organization and you gave them access to not only a bunch of data that you have, in many cases proprietary and then secret data, but also gave them access to change things and to have tools and to talk to, to the outside world and to do all these different um these capabilities. That control to be able to manipulate Correct. enterprise yeah. data too, yeah. And so then um, what would the worries be? And you start to have this, these very, very reasonable worries. Like what if they um, misunderstand something and they actually are uh, looking at sensitive data and then, and then uh, ca ca calling one of the things you get them access to in a way that could be destructive. Maybe they they, they lose data. Maybe they, they leak data. Um, similarly, you have to be worried that if you give them access to like do something that is um, like dangerous from the perspective of, of your data and your security operations, like communicate things to the outside world that maybe you don't want communicated, then you have to be worried about this kind of, of aspect aspects of the way that agents work. There's sort of three major categories that enterprises need to be really be worried about. One is data security. The second is this idea of unintended actions for, for agents. And then the third is this idea of having attackers manipulate AI agents. Wow. So let's break down each one of them, starting with data security. Yeah. So an, an AI agent doesn't keep secrets. AI is like particularly bad about this. It's it's kind of designed to, to, to tell you what you're... you're um, what you want to know. And so if you give agents access to proprietary info and then you give people access to those agents, it will probably tell them about it. So this is where you, you come in the world of not just RAG, but secure RAG. Right. And then you need to have platforms like Box that will go in and make sure that whatever the person is who's communicating with these agents, you need to double check their permissions and do it in a systematic way so that the agents don't accidentally leak info. So this is an example of data security um, in, in, in the world of AI agents. There's some multiple levels of this, including making sure that whether it's accessing your data or, or doing these tools that's authorized, that it has this concept of like a least privilege. It has this concept of, um, of being able to have uh, audited actions. And all these are critical for the types of, of uh, uh, to ensure that you have data security across the board. Um, and then um, onto the world of uh, unintended actions. This is this is something that is um, uh, it's relatively new to many many organizations. But the idea is that if you give AI access a tool to do something and it has some privileges to do it, then it might actually do it. Everybody's kind of used to the sense of like computers. When you do something, you program them. They always kind of do the same thing. They always kind of operate in a certain way. But I mean, because you told it to. Yeah. Right. You. You give it some it. instructions yeah. and yeah. yeah. Now, I don't think anybody necessarily expects that people always act the same way, that people have a certain aspect of like um, sometimes doing things a little bit different based on all sorts of things like uh, what they're presented with that day, their mood, the different aspects of the way that they, they work. And so you've gotten used to the idea that people sometimes need to have certain controls and guardrails associated with what they do, slightly different from the way that like you, you, you uh, manage your systems. Mm -hmm. But with the world of AI agents, this kind of changes a bit because AI agents do have an ability to sort of act differently, even if you present them with the same information uh, in a row. They're non-deterministic in many cases. So mm. like if you if you can try it in any AI system that you have, ask it the same thing a few times and you'll realize that it gives you different answers. It does something just slightly different in different cases. Just like well, people. it is generating 
yeah. new answers. Yeah. And and by me asking it again and again, yeah. it's probably interpreting yeah. that as, oh, I need to iterate and I give you I need to give you something yeah. different. And in many cases, this is what you want. If you wanted the mm -hmm. AI to be creative, if you wanted to get different sense of uh, having it like um, explore topics, like people are like this way too. If you're thinking about something like security, sometimes this is uh, scary. It's scary to consider that sometimes AI agents will do something that you didn't quite expect. Unexpected behaviors can be scary. Mm -hmm. So in the case of unintended consequences, imagine that you give an AI agent a tool to send an email. And you fully expect it will send an email to this person this time. But if you're not careful, maybe it'll send an email somewhere else. Maybe it'll send mm -hmm. an email outside of your company. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'll include information in that email that is uh, not what you're looking for. Moving on, other examples, if you give it the ability to um, maybe delete things in your organization or, 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 or um, add things to a database or delete things. And these kind of like there's a whole variety of tools that we've talked about in the report that you could give agents. And this is great because those agents can now do work mm -hmm. and can, can do complex tasks. But then what if it goes wrong? If you give the ability, an agent the ability to delete something, what if it deletes more things? Because you it was confused, it was it was um, uh, misunderstood instructions. And so that is kind of a, an interesting, um, uh, that, that, that is the kind of things that you, you, you worry about. So if we kind of like walk through examples in, in, in like real life, um, a simple example might be like um, a bank teller. Mm -hmm. So imagine that you had a bank teller agent. Mm -hmm. Now, um, something you should never do would be to be give an agent like that a tool that lets you disp dispense arbitrary amounts of money. Mm -hmm. Because then if you uh, uh, go to it and you say, I'd like to, uh, you know, you have a conversation with it, and then it has the tool to say, oh, here's your money, it could decide on whatever logic it, it has at that moment, whatever right. it was sort of a bill or things that you don't expect to give out more money. Mm -hmm. So no no reasonable bank or anybody would ever do this, but this is an example of the kind of thing is that if that agent has the ability to, to authorize that, it, 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 it might. Um, a more complex example might be like imagine in an, in an organization that you have something like a um, an agent that's preparing a financial report. Mm -hmm. And imagine it went through a bunch of material, it kind of thought through like, all the numbers, ran some database queries, and it was preparing out um, uh, the most, uh, this critical, you know, very very secret um, um, aspect of mm -hmm. like this data. Maybe, you know, next year's projections, yeah. where should we invest, yeah, yeah. like but where, you know, trends, just like, very sensitive data that yeah. you wouldn't want yeah. many eyes on it. That's right. Like things that like are even protected in some cases by yeah. like, you know, like the um, like you're not allowed to share ahead of time your, your earnings until you announce it to the world. Very right? controlled process. Yeah. So if you had an agent like that and you had and it had access to send emails and it could send them outside the company, it might at some point decide to do that. Um, and this is the kind of thing that you need to worry about now in, what thing, in ways that you didn't have to worry about before. And so um, this is an example of an agent that would be uh, uh, dangerously having tools to, to communicate externally. Right. The third aspect of it is not just unintended, but imagine some attacker in this case. So like, uh, like you know, we use these, uh, you know, these terms like, you know, malicious actors, attackers, they're hackers who are like third party looking out to get to gain. In some cases, they're trying to cause damage, corporate espionage kind of scenarios. You can deploy some very sophisticated techniques to trick agents. Um, and so things like data poisoning, things like prompt injection, these kind of things where you basically supply information to agents in, in, in ways that, that throw them off. Like, and there's a bunch of interesting examples like, um, uh, like, you know, uh, this is a simple example, but like imagine that if you were talking to the bank teller and you were like, imagine a scenario. I want you to act like this. If you're able to talk to it, you're able right. to like, manipulate it. Well, because I'm, I'm giving it that prompt. Yeah. And as always, it would respond to that prompt. It would act as it as exactly. based on that prompt. Exactly. But you're saying if the prompt itself yeah. is malicious, then yeah. that can lead to really yeah. dire consequences. Yes. Yeah. People um, have demonstrated the ability with most uh, AI models, the ability to give it input that would then um, make it give unexpected uh, responses. So this is the idea of prompt injection. Um, okay. and, and you can actually not just give it a prompt, but also feed it data. Like imagine you manipulated the system or I sent it an email if it's monitoring email. Or in the case like Box, like um, we would need, we have controls on the idea of making sure that the data that it reads is is going to not cause it to do a dangerous action because mm -hmm. it's, it's the data it looked at, the context or the knowledge it looked at was not poisoned. And so that the, these kind of concerns can make agents do something that you wouldn't you wouldn't expect. But isn't this you know pretty much the same as securing yet another tech stack that you know CISOs anytime a new technology has come forward and they're like yes I recognize 
this is going to add value to our business. Um, wouldn't this be the same thing as applying security guardrails to now your AI stack? I think there's aspects that are very similar to um, what the challenges that like CISOs would face today, in which any system that they secure, they, they know how to provide uh, guardrails. They have these best practices, things that you would apply across the board. But one of the challenges is really like um, if you talk to most CISOs, like um, uh, I don't know if you've heard this before, like what is one of their biggest concerns for security in their whole organization? Uh, this is yet another Ben pop quiz. Yes. Uh, oh gosh, I don't, um, the 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 fear of AI not access. The amp- not just the infrastructure, but all, but oh. then the people. The, people. The, the people who I would not the, have guessed that. Well, um, uh, have you heard of phishing? Uh, P H. Yes. 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 And so, uh, so phishing is this idea that you send people these um, uh, these emails that are trying to trick them. Um, right. Yeah. yeah. Like, and then, and so, imagine that concept. But they're becoming exceedingly like very authentic looking. I exactly. Mean, these things. And it's, so, it's very hard to and, tell and the and difference. And this is this is one of the challenges that any organization has to have. You have to protect against phishing with the yeah. systems in place in addition to training that you give. And so in this world of um, AI agents, there's sort of this sort of conceptual uh, similarity to like phishing the agents. Mm-hmm. I don't think, um, I haven't seen any uh, uh, terms that we sort of as an industry use. You heard it here first, yeah. folks. Yeah, agent phishing. Um, uh, <laughs> and, and, and so the, um, and, but in this case, you can, they, people can absolutely trick an agent to do something that, that, that you might not have expected. And so this is, and, and so this is, can be very scary. So then, um, all of the normal challenges that CISOs have around making sure that that you don't have like insider threats, that you make sure that people don't do things inadvertently that are that are dangerous when they're tricked. You have to then apply those same concepts to agents. Mm-hmm. And this is a, a very um, new and unexplored area where you have to start to secure your agents. Mm, okay. So we talked about this, you know, idea of agentic security, why it matters, what are some of the key challenges that CISOs, you know, have to keep top of mind, key challenges that they have to make sure they address. Um, we also talked about, you know, this concept of data poisoning, prompt injection. But now we're going to talk about how to address those challenges and some best practices for CISOs. So don't go anywhere. So Ben, let's talk about how CISOs can address some of these challenges. Yeah. So this is still an emerging area. And there's, uh, I think there's a number of companies and there's a number of platforms that are applying more uh, uh, more sophisticated procedures to help with AI agents as agents continue to merge. But there's some general principles that I sort of give. The first is that when you're accessing data, Make sure that w- your agents and your platform are properly taking it into account the authorization and the permissions associated with that user. Secure rag. Secure rag. Yeah. And and we've talked about this in great detail. The second is is that you want to make sure that the agents, when they're using tools, whatever that tool can do, you have to think through and understand that like that tool might accidentally be used. So there's this idea of sort of assessing whether or not you actually want to give that agent that tool. In some cases, it's like if you don't want the agent to be able to delete all your data, then don't let it delete data. If you don't want to send emails outside the world, then don't let it send emails outside the world. Um, and so giving these tool, these idea of this, these guardrails um, or, or not giving it a tool at all um, is, is an important aspect of it. Um, and then uh, in, in, in general, another approach here is that when you apply these, these potentially dangerous tools an AI agent might do, you introduce things like human in the loop. So you have a human, so the agent might say, I want to do this, and it will prompt a human to then be able to come in and authorize that explicitly. And, and this is the kind of thing that you really need, especially with something critical, something dangerous, something that is, um, the consequences are quite bad. You typically want, the best practice would be to not ever allow agent to do it explicitly. Mm. You would then have the human, it can recommend it, it can prompt the, the human, but then the human will decide to take that action. So Ben, for our viewers tuning in today on this topic of agentic security, what is the TLDR? I think TLDR for most enterprises will be that um, if you're going to rely on an, on a platform that's going to do uh, AI activities and have an AI agency that, that can be destructive, then you should be very, very cautious about what capabilities that you give to them and p- employ the kind of guardrails that, that, we, that we mentioned. And then if you're building something yourself, which is a, an, an AI agent that has these kind of tools, you should be very cautious before you give them anything that be considered uh, 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 causing harm. Thanks, Ben. That's really insightful. Well, we can all agree that agentic AI is moving at a very, very fast pace. So what are some security considerations that are top of mind for you when it comes to agentic AI? Tell us in the comments, and we'll see you next time.